In today's video, we're going to talk about five Ghanaian herbs and their medicinal benefits. If I do my job well today, I'm going to turn you into okra guzzling, chewing stick, chewing sponge warriors. You know me already, I don't waste time. My name is Nigeli, I'm a medical herbalist. Let's get straight into it. Now, the first one is chewing sponge or chewing stick. Now, if you are Ghanaian, even if you were raised in the UK and either your parents were around or your grandparents were around, I know at some point in your life, you were asked to either chew the sponge or chew the stick. And this is because in Ghana, this is what we use to clean our teeth. In fact, much of Africa uses this to clean their teeth. In Ghana, we use a range of plants, but some of the most popular is neem, which I'll talk about later. We've got Arcasia, uh, Cumarinensis, we've got Garcinia uh, Afzeli and Garcinia Mani. These are just some of the um, once we use in ga, we call it taco cha for the sponge or tacho. And then in chi is chipia. Chipia. The spelling is there. If anybody mentions anything about my pronunciation, you go see trouble. Anyway, there is much science as to why your grandmothers, even in their 90s, retained all their teeth or most of their teeth with not a filling in sight, which many of us, even in our younger ages, can't even say. The first one is the properties of the plant. Now, the plants themselves are many have antimicrobial properties. They have anti-plaque properties. Research has also shown that some of them reduce the acid in the mouth, so they reduces the incidence of dental caries. But there's something in particular that I want to draw your attention to. If you have chewed chewing sponge or chewed chewing stick before, one of the things that you'll notice is that you produce a lot of saliva. And this saliva is the medicine that keeps your mouth in check. Not only is it important in digestion, which we'll leave in another video, but it's also important in keeping good oral health. In fact, there is a condition called xerostomia, I'll put the spelling there because I know I'm butchering it, AKA dry mouth, which could be a symptom of things like HIV, diabetes, even menopause. And when you have such, you end up being at risk of a tooth decay, receding gums, oral thrush, bad breath. And so when you are chewing sponge and chewing stick, not only are you actually cleaning your teeth, but you're also protecting it. And if you have any of these conditions, this is one of the ways that you can encourage more saliva in your mouth. So you see this chewing stick that we like, like every time we see someone chewing stick, we've always got something to say, ah, nye, nye, nye. oh, use your teeth. Ah, nye, 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 nye. Now, I hope by the end of today, you are seeing that this is actually very good for your oral health. And the best people, the best adverts for chewing mouth are those older ladies that have got more teeth in our mouths than some of us. No shade. And then there is neem. Now I'm gonna put some uh, picture here because this is the dried neem that I have and you're not really seeing the character of the plant, but it is known in Ga as kingcho. Kingcho meaning king tree because you know, neem is not actually indigenous to Ghana. It was introduced to Ghana during the reign of, I think, was it King George V? Hence it's called king tree because it was bought when the king was in reign. And then in tree is known as, let me get the name, Duajani and Lileb, in anyway, I'm going to put the spelling there, please forgive me. And the Latin name is as a director indica. Now, I was first told about neem from my grandfather, who would always say that, you know, there was hardly any malaria in um, Tema because the trees were lined with neem trees. Now, if you go to Ghana, you will see that one of the most common trees that you will find is, in fact, the neem tree. But the anti-malarial properties are very well known and has been thought to be down to two compounds. One is jedanine, jedanine and nimbalat. I'm going to put the spelling here because I, I know myself already. So the spelling is here. And oddly enough, the jedanine is also being researched to show anti-cancer properties. So there's a lot more to this plant than meets the eye. Now, I personally use this as an antifungal, antibacterial wash. It's got antifungal properties, anti-parasite um, properties, antibacterial properties. So when I have someone, for example, who's got that um, uh, rash that looks like it's got some, it's like a fungal element to it, or, you know, they've been licking their lips so much and they've got that fungal element on their lips, you make a tea with the neem and then I'll use the tea to wipe it down. On top of that, if you have been gardening, the likelihood is whether you had, when you've had an insect infestation and been asking for advice, you've been recommended to use neem oil. And that is because neem is an insecticide. It's also a laxative. If you ever tasted neem, it is bitter, bitter, bitter. And you could also use it to induce abortion. So as I've said to you, is you've always got to be careful with these plants that you take it in the right dose and under somebody who knows what the heck they're doing. On top of that, if you take neem for too long and at too large a dose, it could also cause some problems. So neem is one of those plants that you don't just drink like you're drinking Milo in the jugs. No, in the pictures. You know us already. And then we have this amazing okra. We will call it in Ghana, in Momi, 
Fetri Nkrumah. I'm going to put the spelling there because I already know me and my pronunciation. It's got a long Latin name, which I don't think it personally suits this wonders of this plant, but I'm going to say it, it is Abel Moshes Esculentos. Anyway, this plant is not just a nutrition powerhouse. It's got magnesium in it. It's got folate in it. Now, for those of you who have heard folate before, we always mention it when it comes to its importance in pregnancy. A cup of this will actually give you 15 grams of your daily amount of a uh, folate and then on top of that you've got vitamin a you've got vitamin c and then you've got vitamin k which we don't really hear that much of but think of blood clotting and bone formation which is very important now on top of that it's got some other antioxidants that help mash up the free radicals now the free radicals like to go around the body and act like they've got no sense and just cause load of damage and so antioxidants like to keep them in check and one of these antioxidants is polyphenols which has also been found to be good in brain health on top of that it's also helpful in terms of blood sugar regulation but be careful because it can interact with metformin which is a diabetes drug and it's not just all. Test tube studies are showing that this plant also has anti-cancer properties, which is thought to be down to the lectin that's contained within the plant. The next thing about the okra, which I indeed love, and is in fact extremely medicinal, is the mucilage. And what do I mean by mucilage? Anybody who eats banku and okra soup will know that the okra soup is not okra soup if there is no draw, if there is no slime, if they hear this, my friend, is the mucilage in okra. And this mucilage is extremely medicinal. First of all, it helps in terms of regulating cholesterol. How does it do that? By binding to excess cholesterol in the body and excreting it through the stool. On top of that, it also helps feed the gut bacteria and helps soothe the gut lining. So very good for digestion. So me personally, when I have certain flare ups because I'm eating stuff I shouldn't eat because I could be sometimes stubborn and not listen. I would prescribe myself a bowl of banku and okra soup. And once I've had that okra soup, my gut feels a lot more soothed and a lot more better. Mucilage does so much more than that. So do not sleep on the okra and do not sleep on this line. Now the next plant is guava. Now this is the dried guava that I have, but I'm gonna put a picture here so that you can see what it's like in real life, including the fruit for which it's more commonly known for. Now in the various Ghanaian languages, we've got gua, gua, gua. I'm going to put all the spellings here. Very much, pretty much the same. And that's also in part with the fact that guava is not actually native to Ghana, but has become very much a part of our Materia Medica. Now the Latin name for this plant is Pisidium guajava. Now, usually when we're talking about guava, we talk about the fruit, and that's because it's rich in vitamin C, fiber, potassium, as well as antioxidants. But today, we are going to talk about the leaves. Now, I was first introduced to guava leaf um, as a remedy for my period pain. And when I took the tea of guava leaf, I noticed a couple of things. First of all, unexpected, I felt very sleepy. And then on top of that, the pain did actually reduce. And when I did further research, I found that not only is it an antispasmodic, it's also analgesic, which means it's uh, pain relieving, as well as a sedative. So if I was to compare the pain relieving properties to some other things like anemone pulsatilla, I will compare this more to chamomile. And if your period pain can be relieved by a hot water bottle or by maybe a dose of paracetamol, then guava leaf will be useful for you. But again, do not operate heavy machinery because the likelihood is you might want to have a nap. So if your period pain is preventing you from sleeping, this might also be a good option. But there's so much more to this leaf. First of all, it's considered to be cardioprotective and that might be down to the fact that there's a high amount of antioxidants and research is showing the ability to lower blood pressure. On top of that, leaf extracts is showing the ability to lower blood sugar, so great for those with uh, diabetes. And also you can use the leaf extract to rinse your mouth in cases of gingivitis. There's also the fact that it is anti-diarrheal and I believe the dosage for that if you have diarrhea is a cup every four hours. So I know we always talk about the fruit, but don't sleep on the guava leaf. You see the joke there? Sedative, don't sleep. Have I just ruined, I think I've just ruined the joke. Oh Lord. And last but not least, we have African garden egg. Now in Africa, we actually use a variety of um, garden eggs. So you'll find that African garden egg can refer to a number of varieties. In Ghana, um, the Ghans will call it Sebe, the tree people will call it Intropo, and the Ewes will call it Agwicha. I'll put the spellings there because I already know no one should say anything. By now, if you watched all my videos, you should know already that I'll be remixing the names. 
Now, the one I would like to focus on in terms of its Latin name is Solonum Macrapon. It reminds me of macaroni, but yeah, I'm going to put the spellings there. <laughs> Now we use this plant a lot in cooking. We've got magnesium, we've got iron, we've got potassium, we've got zinc, but there's also lots of medicinal properties. I've already mentioned what antioxidants do and this plant contains antioxidants. On top of that, you could also use it to help in managing diabetes and also improving vision. This plant also has a role to play in terms of reducing uh, blood pressure. And this is thought to be down in part to a compound called chlorogenic acid. So when you are adding your sebe to the stew and you're making it and you're giving it some vim, eh, eh, know that you are, you are treating and you're healing yourself because of the amazing properties of the African eggplant, of which there are many different types. Now I hope I have turned you into a chewing sponge eating okra guzzling warrior. And if I have not, at least next time when you see someone eating okra and taking in the slime, you're not going to be like, eh, eh. you're going to see the medicinal value in what it is they're doing. And if you see someone chewing a chewing sponge, again, you're not going to say pim because you know that they're going to grow into their old age with the majority of their teeth, unlike many of us. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, please feel free to watch some of my other videos where I cover other plants in Ghana as well as other African countries. And please, I beg all, subscribe, share with your friend, don't keep the knowledge to yourself and eh, keep your teeth fresh. And enjoy. That's why I'm like this, see? So enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.